Welcome to Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast, your podcast dedicated to all things Animal Crossing. Episode 105 is brought to you by Rosa, one of our newest Patreon patrons. Today, Sergio and I are going to talk about the upcoming Pocket Camp update and our top fives in a variety of Animal Crossing topics. So to begin, hello Sergio, how are you doing? Hello Chewie, I'm doing pretty darn amazing. A big part because Pokemon is finally out and <laughs> I am in absolute love. You know what? I forget how much I like Pokemon until I'm playing it. it I'm telling you, it's right up there just behind <laughs> Animal Crossing. I love it. It's so fun. I'm loving this game too. I just like, I've made very little progress because I'm so distracted by the new things in this game. <laughs> the Breath of the Wild area, I'm all about that. <laughs> <laughs> it um, really is. Even the music sounds like it. Yeah, I know. That's what I was going to say. It, <laughs> I, I like playing it with like Jackie watching too, because she makes some pretty funny comments about things. But she also says like, and I heard this, I guess, in a review by Girlfriend Reviews. Um, I don't know if anybody's watched that channel or if you have, but mm. Girlfriend Reviews is basically this YouTube channel that does this really clever review style where... Uh, it's essentially a review of what it's like living with the person who plays a video game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so they do one on Breath of the Wild. And the the person made a really good point in that one where I used to think I was free, but Breath of the Wild set me free, where you could just like climb onto everything, like no part of the world is unreachable, right. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so whenever I hit like a wall and that little dud <laughs> happens in <laughs> yeah. in the game that's like kind of classic you know yeah jackie's like what you can't climb up there <laughs> and i'm like nope just listen <laughs> it tells me no um so yeah it, it's pretty it's i've been having fun with it i have today just been doing like a bunch of the max raid battle things and oh, it's nice. pretty cool the online like it just alerts people that you're online you're doing this and then people can just hop in really quickly and this is brilliant to me because i always really liked I'm i'm sad that this isn't a feature in I guess ranked modes in Splatoon, but it does work in just the regular turf mode where you can just go to your friends list, somebody's playing and you're like, oh, I'll join their room, yeah, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like this kind of captures that where it's like you can just join the room. And it's something I really, now I just want that to be the case with Animal Crossing where you open your gates or, you know, we call them gates because that's like what originated the kind of Animal Crossing wi-fi play you know yes mm -hmm. um so you open your gates to your town and then all of a sudden people just get alerted like oh this person's opened their town and then you just start seeing them show up you know mm -hmm. i would love that yeah it's like an easy feature that gets people playing together right away especially with like eight player multiplayer that's an insane amount of people <laughs> to try to coordinate for one playthrough you know yeah yeah definitely in pokemon it's so seamless and it's super connected like, like you said it's always there it's always alerting you hopefully we get something like that in animal crossing probably not to the same level of connectiveness <laughs> but mm -hmm. hopefully close hopefully close yeah, I I, mean, I hope it's at least close. Like, I love the little notifications you get. Um, yeah. It kind of reminds me of, like, the best friend feature. If you had that on, you would get alerted when your other friend was online, you know? Yeah. Um, and then you could send, uh, I guess, kind of messages to each other from across. Uh, just, like, you could both be in your own town, you know? Yeah. And send messages. So I, I want that. I want that because it just eases the whole communication aspect to the game and kind of the work that has to be done to play with other people. And maybe the invites are a way that they're looking into that, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. The last thing I did want to say about Pokemon um, is that this was it. This is the last major <laughs> n new Nintendo release before Animal Crossing is out. So it is insane. So the the day this uh, this episode airs will be... Um, let's see, November 20th. Well, it's going to be November 19th, but November 20th will be December, January, February, exactly four months yeah. away. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> we are so <laughs> close. I cannot believe we're going to play this game. Um, I want to play it now. 
Can we play it now? <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Hopefully these four months are used well to start promoting it. I mean, unfortunately, we know that it's probably going to start until early next year. But at least, you know, that's mostly three months. Uh, two full months in 20 <laughs> days in March. That's ample time to really promote uh, New Horizons. Yes, and the direct. Come on, yes. we need a direct. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay. So, um, yeah, it, it's I essentially tweeted when Pokemon came out that, okay, Nintendo, Pokemon's out now. Talk, uh, talk about Animal <laughs> Crossing. I'm waiting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just give us a trailer. Give us, a, give us something, you know? So I'm hoping it'll happen soon. But I guess in the meantime, there is a little bit of Animal Crossing news. And... It, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. This one, I'm medium about so far, but let's get this show started, Sergio. I want to start out by talking about the Animal Crossing Pocket Camp Club. Mm. And this is a brand new thing that they just announced, um, kind of while we were sleeping and woke up this Sunday morning, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just so you know, we are recording this Sunday, the, what is the date today? The 17th. Yes. So... We don't know anything about this outside of what the announcement was. And I think today, when you're listening to this episode, if you're listening it the day it comes out, then this will know more. They, they said they're going to drop some more news about it. But essentially, yes. what this is, is a paid subscription service for Pocket Camp. And if you've played Mario Kart Tour, you know about their $5 gold pass subscription to get <laughs> just a variety of extras. I actually did try out a two-week trial of that, and I'm not going to pay for it. Maybe one day when I feel like I play the game enough to, you know, send the developers some money, you know? Mm -hmm. But as of right now, I'm not really jumping on that. But I did, I tried it out just to see what it was like. But... Essentially, that's what we know. Um, I did make a list here of everything else, but it's coming twenty the twentieth of November. So, mm -hmm. the day after this episode first airs, um, it's coming out. So, there's going to be a detailed video about it on the nineteenth. So today, um, that's probably out by the time you're listening to this. So you're probably going to laugh at us for some of our ideas a little bit later on, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> The other thing we know is that there's going to be two different plans. One that's kind of got this camp caretaker thing going on where you appoint a lucky animal as extra help around your campsite. And then the other is a warehouse type of thing that said you receive fortune cookies and you have the ability to store furniture and clothing in warehouses. So... Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what they're going to do with it. Um, and then the last thing we know is that there is still no sign of an update to Gulliver. So I'm never going to get those last five characters that they added to the game. <laughs> um, just a little note there. I'm, I'm mad about that. Yeah, yeah, because we're waiting on that for sure. Yeah, and they, you know, I reread through their stuff, and they did say they were going to try to coincide it with the second year anniversary. And that's right now. Like, this whole month has been second year anniversary things. Yes. And, um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with it. Maybe they're taking it out. Uh, I hope so. Poor Gulliver. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I did have some questions for you, Sergio, but and I'll answer them as well. But the first one is, what do you think the price will be on a subscription like this? Well, based on the descriptions that we have, again, uh, the details of the announcement, by the time you, you are all listening to this, there's going to be more information, maybe including the actual pricing. But as of right now, I'm thinking it might be about maybe $3 for the care caretaker package. And I'm thinking the warehouses one is going to be $5 or maybe more. Um, the reason for that is because I think that one is going to include some free cookies every now and then. Uh, they might do a bundle for both of them. That It would make sense for it to be a little bit cheaper. So maybe 6 or $7 a month for both. Um, that seems about right. Also uh, matching other Nintendo subscription services that are out there, like the one for Mario Kart. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I didn't even think of them being, like, different that way. <laughs> um, I, I guess for me, like, I just said I was hoping that they'd be, like, five bucks for both of them and maybe two fifty each. I think it would make more sense for it to be, like, three dollars if you pick one, you know? Mm -hmm. So that way the deal is, like, oh, if you get both, you get a dollar off yes. of this whole thing. <laughs> so it, if they were both three dollars, you'd pay six, but they're like, oh, yeah, we'll give you a break. Here's them both for five. So... I don't know. I'm hoping it's not more just because and people I don't know how fair this is because but maybe it is. But people have compared the kind of Mario Kart Tour subscription of five dollars to the Apple like gaming subscription where you ah, get yes. access to tons of different games and it's five dollars a month. And I'm like, yeah, kind of a better deal. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a better deal to get like a bunch of different games than just like bonus stuff in one game yeah so yeah so i get it i get why people are not for this type of pricing because it's not the best <laughs> um and you know we're, we're seeing like kind of a shift in nintendo right now where we used to never have to play pay for online but now we're paying for online mm -hmm. it's pretty cheap but you know paying going from not paying to paying is a big difference yeah. for people um and you know a lot of animal crossing players and a lot of people who have been waiting on animal crossing to get the switch like this is going to be a new paywall for them you know um because mm -hmm. nobody's ever paid to play animal crossing online but all of a sudden that's how we're gonna have to play together you know yes mm -hmm. so yeah i i don't know i'm i'm just hoping it's like a dollar <laughs> if I could just spend like $12 a month, that'd be fine. Because I feel like something's $12 a month. Like, uh, no, not $12 a month, $12 a year. <laughs> yes. Because I, I feel like what's mine, a Minecraft server? I, th I feel like you get those for $12 a year. <laughs> um, so like a dollar a month. I don't know, though. Uh, people play Minecraft a lot more than I do. I've only played it a couple times. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess here's my other question, Sergio. What do you think each of these plans will entail? Like, what do you think they all mean or do? Well, for the care caretaker one for your campsite, I feel like that's going to involve um, somebody that you appoint to take care of your campsite when you're either not around or like makes it easier basically because um, for those of us that play uh, for those of you that play pocket camp i haven't really been playing but mm -hmm. i remember w when i did play those are the rewards that are the easiest to forget you kind of dismiss them because you're going around the different areas uh, to talk to other villagers and collect items so you kind of forget about your campsite in I mean, you really shouldn't because that's how you get a lot of essences and a lot of special items, even bells. So I feel like this is a good solution to that. If, if you're a little bit forgetful, I definitely was for the campsite. So this is a little bit enticing on that end. And for the one, the warehouses one, since they mentioned cookies, I feel like, like I said, they might give you a free fortune cookie, maybe every couple of days. I mean, it would be nice to get a free one every day, especially the the special ones, maybe that's a little too much, but I feel like the cookies are going to be uh, involved on that second plan. And that sounds pretty good, considering how pricey those can be, you know, 50 leaf tickets each. Yeah, that, they have been, they're, they've never been very well priced in my eyes, you yeah. know, just yeah. because like, I play other Nintendo mobile games now, and I'm like, man, the daily reward in in Fire Emblem Heroes is like 20% of what you need for a single pull for a character, you mm -hmm. know? Whereas like, I don't know, every week or so of Animal Crossing, you get nine leaf tickets and that's not even 20% of what no. you need to get a, a single cookie, you know? Yeah. So that just, it's just not great. And then Mario Kart Tour even has a better thing. Like every five days you can get enough for a whole pool. So... Hmm. yeah it's just animal crossing is expensive right now and it's cost it, it costs a lot just to get any single thing in pocket camp um and i don't like it <laughs> i've never liked it i think <laughs> no. they should have lowered that threshold a long time ago yeah um, yeah 
So, yeah, I think for the second plan, I definitely agree with you. I like that it sounds like you're going to be getting cookies a little bit more regularly. I don't know if that'll mean you have, like, any control over what cookies you get. Because I can tell you right now, there are a lot in the store right now that I don't care about. I don't really want them. Mm. Um, There are some that I do, and I do want them. But if I don't get those, like, it's not great. Um Uh, But then also, I will say, like, it sounds like they're trying to expand the storage in a bit, uh, in kind of a way with this other with this package, too, where you kind of have a place to store clothing and furniture. So yes, my my first, I guess, image that comes to my head is like the basement in uh, for some reason, I just going to the basement in population growing the very first game (laughs) and seeing like, because, you know, there wasn't the closets didn't work the same in that game. And so you would just fill your basement up with, with a bunch of junk. Like it yes. started to look like just a regular old, like it, it looked like my mom's basement, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> Cause she, she's, you know, from a generation that tends to collect a little bit more than some of us <laughs> minimalists do, you know? Yeah. So th- I remember our basement room being very full of things all the time. So <laughs> my, and my population growing home, like that's what my basement looked like. So that's kind of the impression that I get with that storage thing. Um, and then the first one, I would love if that meant that the caretaker were there to like collect all the essences that the villagers were decided to give you or collect, you know, money and, you know, cause they give you little gifts and stuff mm-hmm. and they level up a bit. And I would love if I didn't have to talk to them manually just because I'm kind of lazy and it takes a l- not too much effort, but it takes some effort. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I just would rather go to my campsite and, oh, here's a nice little bundle of all the stuff that I've been collecting. Yes. S- especially because, like, you don't get this stuff if you don't talk to them. Um, I'm trying so hard right now to collect tons of elegant essences because I need them to craft the final items that I'm trying to craft in this game. And I'll talk about that a little later. But, mm. I have to regularly go to my campsite to talk to people and try to get them. Um, and if I don't, I just don't get them, you know? Yeah, you're missing out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I I would honestly actually really like that, um, if that's what it means. But we won't know till this episode is out. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows? Um, I have another question for you, Sergio. What would make a subscription service worth it to you. And uh, before we get too far on that, actually, do you think, based on what we're thinking with these, do you think that's worth it? I think the caretaker one sounds worth it. It depends on the pricing, but I like the feature that it, if if it is what we assume it is, that you just get all of those campsite rewards, that one is more enticing to me than the warehouses. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say the warehouse one is mixed in with the fortune cookies. So, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like they're making both of them enticing in some way. Um, but yeah, right now, I feel like I don't know if that's enough for me. I, I think the, I lean toward the fortune cookie ones being OK, but there's mm. too many questions I have for that to yeah, really make yeah. a definitive answer, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, um, so I guess what would make the subscription service worth it to you? I was thinking, especially, actually, it could work for both, but I'm thinking if if there's a way that you can subscribe and then, like I do, you kind of forget about Pocket Camp. And basically, (laughs) if you don't play, you still get the rewards. It would be nice if they have a feature like that. Um, Like I said, even if you're not playing, you might get the rewards. You might even get some of the free items that you get when you log in. Maybe you can get some of those. Maybe you can get all of them or at least some of them at random. Even items from gardening events or the different events that the game has. If you just, you know, decide that you don't feel like playing or you don't have enough time to to dedicate as much as you wish to those events, but maybe if you are subscribed, you do get some of those items. That that sounds pretty good to me. That I may consider that. Um, one definite guarantee that would make me purchase it is if there's any exclusive KK slider stuff, as I'm sure you guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I I. Yeah, you always say, you know, just let me know when there's KK Slider stuff. I'll be right back. (laughs) And so I get that. I get that for sure. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, for me, I think what would make it worth it is just like tons of free stuff, tons of it. Mm -hmm. And 
a bunch of leaf tickets on top of that, just because like we don't get enough of them for just playing the game. Um, especially it just doesn't feel comparable to me with the other Nintendo mobile apps. So I want lots of it. And I do really like your idea of just like having access to a bunch of items that have passed, you know, because mm-hmm. um, I, I would be into there's some that I've missed here and there just because I got lazy or didn't do an event enough or, you know, just wasn't playing at the time. So mm-hmm. yeah, some of it I would like to come back and go to and they do kind of bring those things back with um in the game right now. But the current process is like it's time consuming. It eats up your essences, and I don't like it. I, you just have to craft everything, and it's expensive. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not too crazy about it. Um, do you think there will be a free trial like Mario Kart Tour? I hope so. And you, I think it would be better if it's for both at the same time. I'm really hoping it's not that one of the two plans, it's it's definitely better. Like everyone agrees that that one is better and the other one is like sort of so-so um, rewards or not really worth it. So I think it would be better if it's a free trial for both at the same time. What you just came up with is better than what I think they're going to do. Because <laughs> um, I would say yes, I think they'll let us do a um, free trial just because like, you know, that's kind of a lot to ask um, for people. So you kind of got to give them a, a freebie and a free trial on a subscription service on the Internet is pretty standard. I would think like I was very surprised I don't know why I was surprised that like Disney Plus is doing a free trial for a week, but mm. that's kind of what every subscription service does. Yes. Um, they just let you try it out, and if you like it, you can keep paying. They'll charge you at the end of the week, and if you don't, you don't have to, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. So I think a free trial is pretty standard, but I would love if they just did like a Nintendo Mobile f- like subscription. Nintendo mobile subscription, oh. you it works with every single Nintendo mobile game and you get all of the bonus stuff in all of them. Yeah. Um, because like, you know, like a lot of people don't really think of Amiibo as a microtransaction, even though it kind of is. Yes. And it's mostly because like a lot of Amiibo just can be used on many different games. So it doesn't really matter too much. Um when you buy it, so a lot of people, for example, like they bought Mario because they knew Mario is like a Nintendo staple. You knew they knew that Amiibo was going to be used in everything. So, yeah. So I think like having a Nintendo mobile subscription and you just that subscribes you to every single mobile game, like the bonus stuff for five bucks a month. That's a much better deal to me. Yeah, th- that makes a lot of sense. I used to say that when something makes too much sense, Nintendo wouldn't do it. <laughs> but I feel like the Nintendo of today is a lot better at, at doing things that make sense. So, man, I- I'm really hoping they're planning something like that. That would be awesome. It would be really cool. And I think it just connects uh, a lot of people to a lot more of their games. Because I feel like that was their goal with this whole thing at first, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. mobile was their way to reach an audience that they felt they didn't quite reach since the Wii, you know? Um, The Wii was very good about connecting other people to gaming in some way. You got a lot of older people playing games for once, you know? And now mobile games make it so easy for people to just, like, click on a game and play real quick. They don't have to commit as much time or money as we do with our home consoles. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I feel like that goes toward that goal where they're just trying to get p- more awareness out for each game. So if they know there's a mobile subscription service and it works with all of these games, people will be like, oh, I didn't know there was a Mario Kart game. I didn't know. What, I don't know what Animal Crossing is. Maybe I should try that out since my subscription yes. goes toward it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I would love that. I would love that so much. (laughs) Um, So here's another very important question. Are you going to try it out? (laughs) If there is a free trial, yes, definitely. I will try it. If there isn't, it depends on what we get. Most likely, I probably wouldn't unless or until there is KK Slider content. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, So my answer here, and if there is no free trial... I'm going to take one for the team and report back with what I learned. (laughs) (laughs) Thank Um, you. 
Yeah, I'm. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll pay for a month or so and just see what it's all about and just see how you all feel. Yeah. Um. I'll. I'll let you know how I feel about it at least. <laughs> Um, okay, so before we go on to our next topic, which I think is going to be really fun, I do want to talk about some of my pocket camp progress that I've made recently because I am one of those few people who still play every single day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and honestly, I should have warned everybody to start logging in because uh, just recently this ended, but they were giving out 10 leaf tickets with every login, which is a lot more than they usually give. Yeah. Um, and they did it for like 12, 14, 15 days or something. Oh. So I feel like we got like somewhere between 140 and 160 leaf tickets for free, which is like, that's enough for three cookies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, sorry, I didn't tell you all about that. You missed it. Uh, my bad. <laughs> um. But there are still some like two year anniversary things going on. Like right now they have a very good deal on leaf tickets. If you do want to, you know, get more leaf tickets and not have to spend as much, I think it was like six, some six or eight dollars for like 400 and something leaf tickets. And mm-hmm. usually the equivalent is not as much. It's like a hundred leaf tickets for that much. <laughs> um. Which is not a good deal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> if you do want that deal, I'd recommend it. Um, but, you know, I'd only really recommend it if you do see yourself playing the game as much as I do. For example, I play every day. So mm-hmm. for me, it was worth it. I give the developers money every once in a while. Um, but outside of that, I've finished crafting every single special item for the villagers. So... Every villager, when they get to level 10 or 15, it depends on the villager, mm-hmm. they will have they will request a special item for you to craft. And I've now crafted all of those. Oh, so nice. I've officially crafted every almost every craftable item in this game. <laughs> um, the only ones I'm missing are this golden set. You, do you remember the gold furniture where you'd take like five gold ores to Cyrus and he'd craft you a yes. piece of it. Yes. <laughs> so that game that stuff is in this game, but it is expensive. It is end game stuff for sure. Oh. And you need like so I think you need nine hundred a thousand elegant essences to be able to craft all of them. <laughs> oh man. Uh, which is a lot. That's yeah. more than you can carry by one. Yeah. But still <laughs> it's more. Um and then, yeah, you just need obscene amounts of things to craft them. I can currently craft three items <laughs> out oh. of the ten that exist. <laughs> um, mm. And then outside of that, I'm also doing, like, the gardening stuff, which is so boring. I don't... <laughs> this is gonna honestly going to take me forever because you have to garden a million and a half flowers, and then you have to crossbreed those flowers and try to get a million and a half of another kind so you can get all of the items for one certain flower and oh. it's not worth it it is not no. it's so bad <laughs> it's just not fun <laughs> that, that that's the biggest problem with it it's time consuming and it's not fun yeah you yeah. you just go and you plant <laughs> flowers you click some buttons and maybe if there if the if the little caretaker person is there planting my flowers for me I would be, I would buy it. I would oh, buy it. Oh, yeah. Um, because I can't do that every three hours for the rest of my life. No. No. <laughs> uh-uh. It's not cool. But, you know, the, they're the only items I'm missing that are, like, free in this game. Yes. And I'm, and I'm even, I'm willing to pay for them at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad it is. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. Uh, it's bad. So... <laughs> yeah, that's that's my pocket camp progress right now. I'm definitely in the end game times. I have like millions of bells now, um, hundreds of millions. I feel. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, I have too many, too many bells, and nothing to really use them on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Sergio, this has been fun. Let's move on. I'm I'm ready. For this next topic, I'm pretty excited to see some of your things, but let's talk about our top fives in five different Animal Crossing topics. And so we've got some fun ones here, some surprises, some different ways to look at things. Um, 
well, no, not really. Just uh, just some new things. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll give our reasons for some if we question each other. But <laughs> um, I'm going to start with, of course, the most important top five that we can possibly make. And that is, Sergio, what are your top five K.K. Slider songs? Ah, yes. Very, <laughs> very critical. So <laughs> my top five are K.K. Moody, uh, Steep Hill, K.K. Bossa, KK Cruising and Bubblegum KK. Um, for the first one, KK Moody, that that is sort of strange because I I don't recall. Um, you know, it, it was added in New Leaf, and I guess the first time I heard it, I kind of liked it, but it wasn't. It didn't go right on my list, and it's at the top of the list. But <laughs> eventually, when I heard some like remixes or uh, fan renditions with vocals or with lyrics on YouTube. Oh man, I really liked it. It became pretty much my favorite. It's it's it is moody, and I guess that's why I like it. <laughs> yeah, I really like those choices. Um, I think I'd gotten a list of this from you before, and you'll know why soon. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some stuff that I yeah, it'll be a surprise. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. So mine. Uh, okay, I I made a list of five. The fifth one was very hard for me to pick because there were several that I think just depending on the day, I would have picked a, a different one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, today I, I happened you. to pick one. <laughs> um, but the first four that I'm going to list, I don't know how to organize them because I love them all so much. Um, <laughs> maybe, okay, I, I'll start with the one that I share with you, K.K. Cruzen. That's that song is just so, so good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good jam. Um, and I've talked about this one, this next one a lot before, the KK Jazz. Um, I always mention that I don't really like the intro. I think I've opened up to it lately. Nice. Um, and then this other, these two, it's hard to pick which one's my favorite of these two. So I'm going to start with Forest Life. Um, Forest Life is... It's kind of a cool song in the sense of like when if you first started playing Animal Crossing with the GameCube game, then you know that you're going to open up by talking to K.K. Slider and K.K. Slider is just kind of strumming his guitar and playing this gentle tune. And that's forest life. And then eventually, yes. if you ask for him to play that song, he'll he'll play it and you can get forest life in your house. Um, I really don't like the the well I, I don't know if i don't I don't really not liking it is the good way to put it but i much prefer the acoustic version versus like the recorded version oh yeah sometimes they ch they change way too much you're, you're absolutely right yeah so the forest life is one of those where i'm like oh man i've kind of <laughs> like it just needs that acoustic guitar for it to yeah. be like you know it's not really a real acoustic guitar in those games but maybe we'll get one in this next one. Oh yeah yeah we, oh that would oh my good <laughs> i'm so excited for that okay I, I, well let me get to my fi my final pick which yes you know th this could change with forest life with my favorite they're interchangeable but this one is kk techno pop and it's it's wasn't a tune i liked at first <laughs> and it was funny because this is the very first song that i got from kk slider and this was back in the day where i didn't have internet in my house i just started playing the game i didn't really know much about it outside of what my friends told me about and even then i don't think i understood what it was so I played it and then one day it's a Saturday night and I walk to my in front of my train and there's this dog with a guitar and I go and talk to him and I'm like, what is this? This is amazing. <laughs> and I think my brother and my friend who and we all play the game together, we were all there and we saw this and we're like, what is going on? And so we heard this song, KK Techno Pop, and I was like, that was kind of boring. Because <laughs> like the acoustic version is very like yeah. simple. It's not. There's not a lot to it. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, well, that's cool. I want to hear what songs you guys get. I'm jealous. <laughs> and now, like as the time has gone, this is one of those rare ones where I actually do like it better as the recorded version. And so I ran over to my cassette player that you started the game with, and I put the the song in there. And I was like, oh, this sounds pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 
Techno pop, we go way back. This is my very first KK Slider song. It's probably going to be the first one I ask him for, to be honest. Oh, um, that's nice. Nice throwback. Yeah. Our, uh, okay, side question. And this might be a good Haken Villager or Haken Islander question later, but <laughs> are you going to request a song first when you meet KK Slider, or oh. are you going to just let him pick? I'm just going to let him pick. I'm hoping that I get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, oh, I'm i not. It's going to be hard, but I'm probably leaning <laughs> toward just asking for KK Techno Pop. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. It's so exciting. I can't. Oh. We're getting closer and closer <laughs> and I'm getting crazier and crazier <laughs> by the minute. <laughs> um, nice. All right, Sergio, here's our next top five. Um, top five special characters. Um, let me know. Nice. Well, definitely. As I'm sure you guessed, number one, by far, KK Slider slash <laughs> DJ KK. I guess if I had to pick one from those, yeah, I, I'm I'm more partial to KK Slider, the classic. But, you know, DJ KK is also cool. I also like Pascal, Brewster, Kicks, and Dr. Shrunk. You know, I like Pascal's wisdom. I like Brewster's passion for coffee, and he's really passionate about it. I really like <laughs> that. Kicks, I don't know why, but Kicks is just cool. Like, I, I cannot put, like, a description to him. He's just cool and chill. I like him. Um, Dr. Shrunk, I just like that he tries, and he doesn't really care about anything. He just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely, he's trying. He's doing his best. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I really like your picks. Um, I definitely have one that's shared with you. It's going to be a bit... I didn't put one on my list just because I knew you were going to and I wanted to have something a little bit different to say. Um, mm -hmm. But the one we did share was Kicks for sure. And mm -hmm. what I like about Kicks is just like the way that he's written, he's got like a different kind of dialect going to him. Like you can tell he's just kind of like a... I feel like somebody who's on the streets a lot <laughs> just doing yeah. business you know yeah um, so yeah i've always i've always really liked the dialogue that kicks gets throughout the game um yeah but yeah other than that we don't have a lot of shared ones because i picked some different ones and i left i, I did leave kk slider out but i knew you were going to pick them so you got me covered yeah. there <laughs> and i was like you know what i'm going to cheat <laughs> sergio's got one of the top <laughs> ones i'm going to pick some other ones just to change it up you know <laughs> nice yeah um so um I'll, I'll start with the one i talk about probably the most and that's leaf and i just love i i've always been just okay with sloths i'll be honest with you the the actual <laughs> animal sloths i'm all right with them i think they're fine but i really like um what leaf does in the game so i really mm. do appreciate like the greenery that we get because of leaf you know um, yes we got bushes for the first time we got all like the fertilizer kind of thing for the first time so i really do appreciate all of the new stuff that leaf brings to the game and i'm looking forward to seeing some more new things come to the game because of him you know yeah there should be a lot more uh, i have very fond memories of spending entire afternoons just gardening and i feel <laughs> like it you know leaf should have been or a, a store manager like a gardening manager should have been in the game long before so i definitely agree leaf leaf is very important yeah definitely um so my next one that i really like is harriet i don't have too much to say about her just that like i really appreciate that we can change our hair and harriet i think has a cool style to her yeah um, and i also <laughs> really like like her dialogue in the game i feel like that sticks out to me just the way she talks and everything yeah. Um, so the next one that I have here is Lyle and Lyle, <laughs> he, I feel like I'm picking a lot of characters where I really like how their dialogue is built out. Cause he's That's always like, true. bam, you got me, you get it. <laughs> he's like selling you, um, he's selling you insurance and he just makes it like such a fun thing to read. He's like, yes. been in an accident, bad news <laughs> insurance though. We got you covered. <laughs> i really they nailed the like kind of sleazy salesman type of talk with him. yes so i really appreciate that um the my favorite of this list though is sable for sure just because like she does ah. something that is so unique to all of the other characters where 
usually we don't get too much into their lives, you know? And Sable is like, at first she doesn't talk to you at all. And as you talk to her more and more, you get to that point where you, she'll finally open up and say, you know, start giving you some information about the world that you're in. So <laughs> that that's why I had to pick Sable for sure. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I've i always loved that about her. Uh, the the relationship that it takes time to build, but it when, once you get there, it's really rewarding. Yeah. Um, so... My, the next top five that I've got for us here is villagers. And I, I get this question all the time. Like, what, who's your favorite villager and everything? And for me, this one's, a, this one's a hard one because I feel like it changes all the time, <laughs> depending <laughs> on my mood and everything. Um, but I, I picked a lot of fun ones. So I, I think I'll start with this one, Sergio. Cool. Yes. Okay. The fr and these are in no particular order at all. I, I couldn't organize them <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to. Um, the first is Eunice, who is a black sheep. I I don't know what it is about this sheep, but I just think they're really cute. <laughs> I like them a lot. Um, nice. The next one is Pearl. She's a calico cat, which is kind of like a three-colored cat. I really... Yeah. I find her just she seems so unique. Like there's so many different cats in the game and she manages to like stick out in a way. And so I that's why I like her a lot. Um the next is Sydney and it was really hard for me not to just pick a bunch of koalas because I've noticed <laughs> I really like koalas now. <laughs> um so she's a koala, kind of a kind of a purple color to her, but yeah, Sydney's a really good one. This Actually, I'm going to talk about this other one first. So Tucker is a <laughs> mammoth, and yes. it's one of those rare villagers that's kind of a unique species within another species where we have elephants and stuff, but Tucker oh, yeah. is like a mammoth versus an elephant, you know? Um, yes. I really like his little outfit. It makes him feel like he's prehistoric and everything. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big Tucker fan. And then the last one, this is the only one that well I, I guess i've had pearl in my town before but this one is one that i haven't had in my town since the very first game and i've mentioned him before but it's vladimir he's a little yes. pink bear cub and he's a little jerk <laughs> he's so mean <laughs> he was my mortal enemy he was my nemesis and i love the guy i i was really <laughs> devastated when he moved away i was like who i think every town needs an enemy <laughs> Every town needs yeah. a villain, and <laughs> Vladimir was my perfect little pink bear cub villain. <laughs> nice. So I love him. Um, yeah, I'm excited to hear about yours, Sergio. Cool. Well, mine are so the first two are in order. I had a favorite one, favorite two, and the rest aren't. But definitely by far my favorite. My girl Hazel, uh, <laughs> the Uchi squirrel. She has not left my original new leaf town she's always there she's she's probably gonna live there forever i can turn on the game in 2040 and she's gonna be there i know it i just know it <laughs> yeah <laughs> my my second favorite of course alfonso even though he left uh without saying pretty much anything but oh man when we were there he was my my bestie for sure um replacing alfonso pretty much the next day was bob and uh, <laughs> somebody that i already liked but the fact that he replaced alfonso pretty much even on the same spot where alfonso was uh yeah lazy cat i i love bob as well uh then kurt the cranky bear he was my villain at first if you recall he <laughs> bad-mouthed uh alfonso in new leaf and i kicked him out but we <laughs> became close friends in pocket camp we made up and i like him a lot now <laughs> <laughs> And last but not least, Roscoe, the cranky horse, um, another villager that I had in New Leaf. And he was like my, um, I always thought of him as an uncle. And I got some good life advice from him. Um, you know, even though I repeated some uh, two lazy characters I've, and two cranky characters, I've always felt like they were different enough. Like Kurt was like a mean friend in a way, but Roscoe was the slightly angry uncle. So even though they're the same personality, they feel different enough for me to, you know, include them uh, on my list. And I like that a lot about Animal Crossing, that even some animals with the same personality, the way you feel or, or the way you imagine them in your head, they're, they're different. Yeah, yeah, I... I like that a lot too. I really like um, 
just like the variety you get from villagers, even of the same type, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, okay, I think this one's going to be exciting for everybody, but let's talk about our top five new features in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And oh, nice. I'm sure we're going to have some a lot of overlap here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I'll, I'll let you start, Sergio. Cool. And definitely the first and foremost, like, cool new feature, crafting. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's going to be a lot of people's uh, biggest uh, new feature that they're looking forward to. Definitely for me, I cannot wait to start crafting. I It's it's going to be a big game changer. Uh, I, I like the fact that it's optional. Like we know that you're going to be able to buy whatever you craft or at least uh, most of the items that you can craft, you can just buy them if you want. But I cannot wait to actually be crafting a lot of different things. So for sure, crafting number one. The next one is is actually the optional control that you're going to have on your island. Um, the first example being that you can decide where the villagers are going to move their tents. I feel like that's a, a little example of the control that you're going to have. And for purists out there, uh, I, I, li- I also like the fact that this is optional. So if you want to leave it up to random, that's, that's an option. And I think that's the best of both worlds in this case. The next one is the Nook Miles, which are little rewards, like achievements type of thing. I'm looking forward to seeing how many of those there are. I think there's going to be a lot, and I cannot wait to start achieving all of them, you know, over time. Uh, fourth on the list, it's outdoor decorating. It's pretty cool. It's I guess it's not as much of a priority for me, but I know it's brand new, and I feel like I might just not be seeing the full potential that this could be bringing. I feel like I might get a lot into it eventually. Um And the last thing on my list is the villagers doing more things that they hadn't done before. Like we've seen in some of the trailers, you see a villager reading a book or actually sitting down um, on the grass. I I like those type of new interactions that they do. It it makes them feel more alive. It makes the game feel more natural and realistic in a way. (laughs) So I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, you listed a lot of really great things here. Um, <laughs> the one specific, uh, you, you listed a couple that I don't have, so I do want to talk about them a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. The control over your island is a big one for sure. Um, there's so many people who want this, who want to be able to choose where their villagers move in, you know? Yes. And I don't, I, w- I won't agree with them because I'm going to let it be random. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. you nailed it. Like, it's optional. So. I don't have to use it if I don't want to. Other people can use it. And you know what? Maybe I will want to at some point. I'm open to yeah. trying new things, you know? So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. If they add it and it's just something you can or can't do, depending on what you decide, that's important. Um, and then, yeah, just the villagers doing things like sitting and reading a book. Um, I will say we have gotten a little taste of this in happy home designer and pocket camp but these are all like (laughs) we've gotten nothing but spin-off titles where the team could like play with the characters make them do new things so i do appreciate that we're finally getting a lot of these little details added to the mainline series and i'm excited to see all of the things they do while they're walking around my town or even just hanging out inside of their homes you know yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so the ones i did share with you were crafting Nook Miles and outdoor decorating. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it with those, so I won't have to say too much. Um, I will say Nook Miles. I want to see what types of prizes that we're going to get. I do really want to see that. Oh, yeah. Um, but I am excited to use them. Um, the other two that I had that were different from yours, one is a bit bigger than the other, so I'll start with the smaller one first. But animals have mm. sleeves now. That's a big deal (laughs) to me. I just want them to wear actual clothing instead of tank tops all the time. So that's a that's a game changer. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And this one, the the bigger one, may actually be more of a game changer. But it's starting this town (laughs) from scratch. I really, you remember the days before we saw this game? I was just like, I want to start with nothing. I want to start in a total dump and then play this game from, you know, the very beginning, like before anything exists. And that's exactly what they're giving us with this game. You know, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the main big <laughs> thing they've been pushing this whole time. So I really appreciate that. Um, nice. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we have one final top five to go through. This one probably won't take as long. It's kind of a funny one. <laughs> but Sergio, <laughs> what are your top five fish in the game? <laughs> nice. <laughs> so top five fish, uh, the coelacanth for sure, because of its rarity. The dorado, I like the name. I like the color. <laughs> <laughs> Also, the arowana, that was the first, quote-unquote, big or, like, rare fish that I caught in New Leaf, so definitely stuck with me. The shark, because you see the fin, and it kind of gives it a, a very different field, even though it's just a hard fish to catch, um, <laughs> like others, you know. And the koi, because I always remember that time when I went on a, on a quest to catch a koi for a friend of mine that wanted one because the villager asked him for one. And then we found out that you cannot share fish with other players <laughs> oh yeah that's too bad <laughs> yeah i don't know if they'll ever change that probably not yeah but you know it's more fun to catch them on your own that's true that's yeah. true <laughs> um so my list real quickly i really like the red snapper that was a real nice break from catching um sea bass all the time because <laughs> yeah back in the day they were very similar in size so it was hard to tell which one you were gonna get so Whenever you knew yeah. you got a red snapper, you knew you were going to hit gold. Um, the coelacanth, just because that's really cool. I remember the first time finding it and just being blown away. And Napoleon fish, that gave me the same thing where it's just like this giant <laughs> blue fish. And yes. that was really cool. Um, I shared the koi with you. I really do like that it's like a giant goldfish. <laughs> that's yeah. very fancy. Um <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one is an actual goldfish. It's a pop-eyed goldfish. I really like that it's popped eyes. I think they're cute. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, those are my top five fish. I think they're fun. <laughs> nice. Cool. Um, so, Sergio, let's go ahead and move into our Haken's Islander Corner. And for those of you who don't know, every single week on the show, we ask our patrons on Patreon a question and then read their answers here. This week's question was... Are you going to play New Horizons more on handheld or on your TV? And Sergio, what are you going to do? It's mostly going to be on the TV. Mostly because I'm going to be recording all of the, the gameplay. But even if I wasn't, I'm, I'm just a TV switcher kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do really appreciate playing on the TV so much. I've been playing, I don't think I've even tried Pokemon in handheld yet. It's oh, only really? been wow. on my TV so far. Nice. Um, so I should probably try that a little bit later today. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, I'm going to be mostly TV, but I really do appreciate that I'm going to be able to take it with me too. That's going to be a lifesaver for sure because yes. I go yes. on trips and there's some days where I just need to – I don't have access to a TV or have my – doc plugged in you know so yeah yeah mm -hmm. um so let's go ahead and go back and forth on these sergio i'll let you start sure our first answer this week is by medi and he says tv as much as i can but definitely handheld when i'm in bed ah that's that's a really good point like just having that uh, versatility with the switch it, it's very very nice you know you, you can play when on the tv when you can but there's always that time where you want to keep playing but it's getting late but you know it's easier to play um, handheld at when you're on bed and you just leave the switch by your bedside and you're done yeah i'll for sure i see myself ending my days just being like all right time to lay down in bed and play some animal crossing <laughs> <laughs> so i see that being the end of my day and that's nice. gonna be a wonderful end to my day <laughs> <laughs> um cool so fantastic said i think i would tend to play on tv more because i've never experienced animal crossing on tv before I started with New Leaf and have always hoped to be able to see my little friends on the big screen. So, yeah, this is really cool. I'm really excited for everybody who's only really played the handheld games and never really played the TV games. Because there are tons of people who got into the series during Wild World, which is, of course, handheld. And then yeah. a lot of people skipped City Folk because it was a lot more of the same stuff. So... They didn't really yes. see too much of a reason to get it. And then New Leaf was a big change, so they went to that. But now, I think it, New Horizons is really bringing both of these worlds together for sure. So, yeah, it's going <laughs> to yes. be cool. 
Yes, definitely. Uh, Mal says, I mainly played Population Growing, so I'm used to the series being on the TV. Plus, I need to see the prettiest looking Animal Crossing on the big screen. Handheld will be reserved for late at night when I'm too sleepy to sit up. Nice. Uh, this is on, on the other side. You know, when you started with Population Growing, yeah, you're used to playing Animal Crossing on a console on your TV. So it's nice that New Horizons is going to offer... Whatever you prefer or whatever you whatever is most convenient for you because, it's, you know, you might prefer the TV, but you travel a lot. So just having it on handheld, as long as you have Animal Crossing with you, what else do you need? Yeah, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Wendy Lucio said, I'll likely play handheld because I'm too lazy to dock it on my TV and vice versa. If I had an extra switch, one for the TV and one for on the go, then maybe I'd play on my TV. So yeah, they're definitely <laughs> in that handheld side where it's just way more convenient to play that way for them. So yeah, it, it, some people just, you know, they, I, they do what's convenient to them. And I think that works. Yes, yes, definitely. And if you do have two switches, yeah, you get two islands and you can do one TV, one handheld or both either. Yeah. So Real Life Cloud says, I'll probably play mostly handheld because my TV is being used by someone else a lot of the time. But I want to play on the TV sometime. I want to experience the graphics on the TV and get nostalgic for all the hours I put into City Folk for the Wii. Nice. I See, again... It depends on how things are going. Uh, you know, things change. You might be on vacation or you might stay at home for an extended time and you get the TV to yourself. So just having the switch with that, both options, that's that's the best part. Yeah, and I'll say that this is a really good point too, just because like some people, like myself, I only have one TV. And, you know, if you have a bigger family and you're sharing one TV, it's really convenient to be able to just take your video game with you <laughs> and do your own thing. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal. Um, so Tab said, my best Animal Crossing experiences were handheld. So I'm looking forward to playing on my own Switch Lite. I'm waiting for an Animal Crossing version. We already own a family <laughs> Switch, so my kids will be able to play, have their own island and play together on the TV and come visit on my island. I just love playing handheld whenever I, wherever I want, curled up on, on my chair in the living room or all cozy in bed. So, yeah, this is a really good point, too. Just like, yeah. if that's how you enjoyed playing the game and how you enjoyed experiencing it, that's the way to go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, you know, way better than the Wii U that you were kind of restricted where you could play, like, you could play handheld, but, you know, it was, you had to be, like, 30 feet within whatever the console was. With the Switch, you can play anywhere, any part of the world, as long as you bring it with you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, Babe Later 1723 says, I used to almost always play games in handheld mode, but as I've gotten older, I have moved more towards playing everything on my TV. I do play in handheld mode while my boyfriend is playing something, so honestly, I see myself playing both on the TV and in handheld mode about the same amount. Nice. And just to highlight again that the Switch offers both options. So, whatever works for you and whenever that changes, you can do whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then our last answer is from Nez, and they said, I'm absolutely going to play mainly on the TV, as the thought of Animal Crossing in full HD is just kind of magical to me. Also, some of my fondest memories of Animal Crossing were with City Folk, so it'd be nice to return back to the big screen. I will also be playing handheld whenever I can't play docked, though. Long road trips. And yeah, I mean, that's a huge oh, deal. Oh, yeah. A big... Animal Crossing HD game, like the first game in HD ever, it's going to be worth seeing it on your TV at least once, you know? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> but then also like road trips, that was huge for me as a kid. So <laughs> I I remember how much I played Wild World every step of the way <laughs> on a road trip. So nice. I think that's going to be very important for me for sure too, because I imagine I'll still go on some road trips that I will, I'll want to play, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast. Don't want the episode to end? Well, you can keep the conversation going by Nintendo switching over to our Discord. Just follow the link in the description, and you can talk with other people who love Animal Crossing as much as you do, including Sergio and me. 
Want to support the show in a bigger way and get your voice heard during the show? Visit patreon.com slash Chewy Plays Nintendo. You can support our show with just one dollar, have an episode dedicated to you, get special access to a secret room on Discord, join in on the Haken Islander Corner, and even read a monthly newsletter covering all things Haken and Chewy Plays. We really appreciate the support and put your money towards some great things on this show. Tuned in on YouTube? The comments are a great place to let us know your answers to the Haken Islander Corner. Are you going to play New Horizons more on TV mode or in handheld mode? Or maybe both? If you dig what you hear, please KK slide over to that review section on your platform of choice. Let people know what they're missing out on. Haken is a wild production brought to you by Chewy, Sergio, and all of our patrons. We thank you for listening, and we hope you have a great week. Goodbye, everybody.